Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can trigger a flow from a button in an Outlook email. Um, in this case, with a list of choices. Um, this was inspired by a video that Shane Young did, um, and I'm going to use a slightly different approach. Um, so let me show you what it does, and then we'll go ahead and build it together. Um, so I've got this list called Lunch Choices. I am going to create a new record and save that. And that is going to trigger an email to me that's got to ask me for my choice of sandwich for lunch. Okay, there's the email. So I click on the email and it gives me four choices. So I'm going to choose cheese and beetroot. Click on there. And it gives me a response to say, hello, thank you for, for, for submitting your sandwich choice of cheese and beetroot. We will deliver it to your desk when the van has been. If we go back to the list, we can see that I've chosen cheese and beetroot. And if I click it again, change my mind to cheese and onion, and go back to the list, it's now changed to cheese and onion. So it's a pretty simple flow to build. I've done it in a bit of a different way to Shane. So let's go through and see how to build it. Okay, so let's go back into the list and take another look at that first. If we go into the list settings, we can see that I have got an additional column called GUID, and the internal name of that is actually GUID0. Um, and that is an index column, so that if we had many entries, we could easily find that entry. The reason for the GUID is that when we create the URL for the button to click on, I don't necessarily want the email address in that. I want something to look it up with, a uniquely identifiable number that isn't easily guessable. So I've used a GUID here, um, and that's where we really need to know from there. So I'm going to create two flows. Um, one to receive the request and one to um, send it. I'm actually going to create the start of the receive request first. So I'm going to call this receive lunch choice and it's going to be when the HTTP request is received. And this is where we differ from Shane's um, method pretty much straight away. So I'm going to set the method to get and in the relative path, I'm going to put GUID and I'm going to put in curly braces, sandwich choice, just like that. Now, the difference of using the relative path is that it enables us to pick these things then from the dynamic content easily. So I'm going to pick the GUID and then I'm just going to save it. Obviously, this flow doesn't do very much at all at the moment. But the reason I'm saving it and just putting a single action in is so that I can grab the URL that it will generate. And we can take a look at that. So if we copy this URL and put it into Notepad, we can see that in the URL, there is a GUID and a sandwich choice, which we'll dynamically replace. So let's keep that there for now and go back and make another flow and we will call this one send lunch choice and let's just skip and our trigger is going to be when an item is created and we'll pick our test list. Uh, it's going to be lunch choices. And then we will do a compose action. I'm going to rename this to GUID. And I'm just going to use an expression GUID. Because we're going to use this a few times. Then we're going to do an update item, and we're going to pick the list again. Uh, lunch choices, and the ID of the item to be updated is the ID. And the only thing we're going to update is the GUID with the GUID. 
Now, going back to the list, this is a person column, so we can easily get the email address from there. Um, so I'm going to make a compose action again. And in this one, I'm going to call it HTML template. And for the inputs, what we're going to do is going to go to GitHub and get this free responsive HTML template. It's got a call to action button in it. So I'm just going to go into there and grab that. I'll put a link to this page in the description to the video. So let's go over to Notepad and paste that in. Now we can see the email here, and I'm going to change the title of it to lunch. Lunch choice. And we'll come down here and we can see it says hi there and a line of text. So I'm going to change that to Please let us know your choice for lunch today. And I'm going to change, put a bit of dynamic content in there so it's got the person's name. So let's go over to here. Um, I'll put the person display name there and just copy that and paste that there. Um, and then we've got our buttons. Um, now, these are the buttons here inside of this TD and I go all the way down to there and it, the text for the button is call to action. Before I go any further let's just save it and so you can see what it looks like. Email. Okay. Email. There it is there. Okay so we've got hi, person display name, please let us know your choice of lunch for today and then the button. So in our SharePoint list The sandwich is a choice, and there are four choices. So we need to build that into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this TD. And to make it easier, we'll do it outside of here um, to make it a bit more readable. Let's get the href. Just put it down here a little bit so we can see it a bit easier. So here is where the link leads to. So if we get our Power Automate link and we can put that in there, we need to replace the GUID and we need to replace the sandwich choice and we need to name the action. So I'm going to call this my first choice was cheese and pickle. Because I'm going to do this a few times I just want to make this a bit easier to edit. So let's just put that down here. And then we've got an easy place to edit it all. So the GUID, I'm going to leave there. The sandwich choice I need to put in. So let's get all of our choices. Grab that, copy that. I'm going to go to URL encode and encode all of these. And there they are down there. So the first one I want is cheese and pickle. And I'm going to put that in here where the sandwich choice goes. As I said, GUID, I'm going to leave in. So let's now go back to our email template. And I'm going to replace this whole line with that. OK, there we are. So um, I'm going to copy that. Put it in again, and the next one is cheese and onion. So I'm going to replace that cheese and pickle there with cheese and onion, and change the text. Let's refresh our example to make sure it looks good. Uh, it's not bad, these buttons are a bit close together, so I'm going to change that cell padding there to say 8 maybe. Yeah, that looks a bit better. And then I'll have two, row, two rows of buttons. So I'll copy that whole thing and paste that there. And then I'll change the last two choices 
so that they are cheese and beetroot. And cheese and salad. Okay, that probably looks okay now. Let's have a look. Okay, so here's how our email is going to look. I will just change that good luck message at the end. Okay, I also want to get rid of the footer. Let's get rid of that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is take all of this stuff and go back to my flow and just paste it in. Close that up. I'm going to do a new step. I'm going to choose send an email, V2. And I'm going to use dynamic content here and pick the person's email that we added to the list. And I'm going to say lunch choice for today. I'm going to put this into code mode, get rid of that. And I'm going to use an expression and I am going to say replace. I'm going to pick from dynamic content, the HTML template. And I am going to replace the phrase GUID with the dynamic content of GUID. So what that is going to do is going to replace all of these bits here, these GUID references, with the GUID that is generated in this part here. So this part should be working now. So let's test it out. So I'll do a new, by the way, on this new, I edited the columns so that only the person was visible. So I'll pick myself from the list and save it. Yeah, lunch choice for today. Let's get rid of that one. So if we have a look at this, we can see that the URL that this leads to matches it's got the GUID and it's got um, the choice of sandwich. Yeah, I can see it there, cheese and onion and cheese and beetroot. So we click on that now, it will execute the receive lunch choice flow. We don't have any runs there at the moment, so let's click on it. And what we get here is a blank page, no errors, but it's not particularly useful. And we can see that it ran and the choice, this was the GUID that came through. So let's edit this now and make this do something more useful. Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to do get items. I can't get the item by reference because I didn't pass the reference across, I only passed the GUID. So if I do get items and pick the list, um, lunch choices, and I'm going to do a filter query where GUID zero, EQ, GUID. And I'm gonna do a top count of one because it'll only ever be one. And then I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna re-execute the previous run just to make sure that it gets the record. Okay, so let's have a look at the outputs. Yeah, that's all good. And what I'm going to do is a new step. I'm going to add a compose. And I'm going to do first dynamic content value. The reason that I'm doing that is because this is only ever going to return one item, but it is designed to bring back an array of items. So by doing first, we'll change that array into an object and we'll get just the object back. Okay, so here is our output and we can see that it's the record related to my account. Now I don't really want all of this information, I just want the ID. So what I'm going to do is just copy that output, edit the flow, 
I'm going to add a new step, pause JSON, and I'm going to do generate from sample, and I'm going to paste that in there. Now, I'm not interested in all of this stuff, so I'm just going to delete it. The only thing I'm interested in is the ID. And for the input, I'm going to copy this expression, put it in there, and I'm going to delete this compose action. So now I can do an update item, and I'll pick the list, and the list name, lunch choices, the ID of the item to be updated is from parse JSON. And then the sandwich value is going to be a custom value. And that is going to be the sandwich choice from the trigger. And that will update. So at this point, it will all work and it will update the list with the correct sandwich. But what it won't do is send anything back to the user. So I'm going to add a response action. And in the headers, I'm going to type content type. And it's going to be text forward slash HTML. Now for the body, I'm going to go to this website, HTML boilerplates. And I'm going to add bootstrap on some dummy text. And that will probably do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste that in there. And I'm going to say hello and change that to be the display name, person display name. Put a comma in there. Where did that go? Over there. So I put a comma there, and then change this boilerplate text. I'll say thank you. Put in some dynamic content of the sandwich choice again. Okay, so this response is what's going to be sent back to the browser. Um, I'll also put the link for this HTML boilerplate tool in the video description. So, in theory, if we go back to our list, which isn't populated, go back to my email, and I will choose cheese and beetroot. Then here it responds to us. Now, with the HTML, we could obviously be much more elaborate. And if we go back to our list, hopefully it will have updated with cheese and beetroot. I'll click it again, cheese and salad. And it has updated. So. So there's a couple of key differences here from the approach that Shane took. I use this relative path option, which is really useful for easily getting things into the dynamic content without having to um, manipulate the query string. And obviously the response action provides confirmation to the client who's clicked on the button that something has actually happened. Um, and so that is how you can build that flow. It's pretty easy to do um, and works really well. Hopefully you understand why I use the GUID. If you were using this for a more serious application, you would want something more uniquely identifiable and less easy to manipulate than just an email address or a ID number of a record. So uh, I hope that's helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to help. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.